Hey friends, welcome to Monday. We we welcome all love to Monday a new so week. much. Yay! Yay! <laughs> Yay. Hopefully it's going to be a good week. It should be nice. Oh, I'm, oh, we're doing great. <laughs> so far. Yeah. So, hey, in the podcast today, we talk about uh, naked elves. We do the Lord of the Rings to be... More specific. Specific about it. Lord of the Rings has a casting call that's worrying fans of Lord of the Rings. A little concerned. And uh, the concern we explain. Um, we get into some cinnamon sugar butter spread. Hotas. Yes. And Nikki. And what those have to do with each other. Uh, where your headache might be coming from. Oh, that one's a weird one. Delaying James Bond, the yeah. Apple versus the Google App Stores. The James Bond one, we just cover at the end real quickly, but we talk about Regal Cinemas as well uh, and what that means to movie theaters with this. So, Hey, wait, guys. Yeah, go ahead, hi, Chris. Chris, we're doing our podcast intro. Say hi. Oh, hi. Hi. Hi, Chris. Hang on, Chris. We'll be right there. <laughs> Uh, yay, thank you, Chris. Let's all give Chris yay, a round Chris. of applause. Yay. The good news is, because of Chris's hard work, there will be a podcast today. We can do it. We were waiting. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. <laughs> all right, uh, well, that's him. Uh, let's see. There's also some stuff about Cobra Kai, stamp collecting, disinfecting stadiums, things of that nature. All right, enjoy the podcast. Text and say hello anytime. Text 877 to Radio U. Put your name and that you're a podcast listener, and you can even send us a story if you want us to cover it. Um, but, yeah, we'll get that next time we're in the studio. All right, you guys have a great day. Enjoy. Bye. Bye. A Rotten Tomatoes score so high, they refuse to make it public. The Riot on Radio U. You know, I was going to talk about the headache thing, but... Let's just let's just jump right into it, Nikki. Let's just get right in to Lord of the Rings. Yeah, so Lord of the Rings, um, a lot of it sold to Amazon. Yep. Amazon was supposed to be making its own series. Which it is. It is, like a prequel to everything. Well, it takes place during the second age of Middle Earth, which is uh, not exactly something that Tolkien covers a lot in his books, as which if it perfect. actually happened. I know, yeah. Um, <laughs> But uh, we hear about the first age, like the fall of Numenor, Morgoth, where Sauron comes. Like, you hear about that kind of stuff in the Silmarillion. But, and then the third age, which is what we see in the movies. Uh, but that second age, eh, It's light not, on not, stuff. Not as much. Which is and, perfect for them to make something out of it. Right. Now, one of the things that uh, people have pointed out is that in The Lord of the Rings, uh, all romantic relationships are monogamous. Yeah. And there's no, uh, I, there's quite frankly, no depictions of sexuality outside of people being married or being in love. And uh, are they but, changing that? But Nikki, he didn't write much about the second age. So now they can add, it's, oh, now they can add stuff into it. Boom, chicka, boom, no, they're boom. not. They're not adding. Amazon is, it's not as bad as HBO, but. <laughs> Amazon <laughs> has put out a casting call. Looking for actors comfortable with nudity. Oh, really? Oh, oh, that does something to the to the nice Lord of the Rings part of our heart. Are you I, sure? Maybe it's just a a normal one. Maybe that means men who are shirtless as centaurs. Yeah, like I bet, I bet it's something else. It's not going to be that. It's not going to be like Game of Thrones. I. You're worried. Be surprised. <laughs> they think that you know to to make it like that would be. What would get people to watch it? Oh, man. Oh. I have so much to say about it that I feel like I can't I don't think say. the Tolkien estate would be up on that. That's not really in brand. I, no, but depending on how much they've sold the rights, yeah, they, might they, not might, have a... they may have no say <sighs> in what takes place. Okay, I don't think they'll ever make it anyways. <laughs> well, there is <laughs> It'll that. It'll never come out. There is that. But it is... <laughs> It hurts a little bit. It does. It's not it's what just, that's about. It's not. And they're going to make it about that. Can I? I I'm just going to tell you, like, okay, sex is great and all, right? But I want you to think for just a minute. Like, how much time on average do you think, let's say an intensely sexually active person spends having sex, sex each week? I mean, really, what are we talking? An hour? A couple of hours? Out of 168 hours. <laughs> Like, there's only so much time in the week. A lot of it's taken up by sleeping, eating, going to work, fighting cave trolls, whatever it is. They're going to just push it all in. Right. All so of it in. If your show's an hour.
hour. <laughs> Why don't we focus on some of the hours, other hours during the week? That's what they're going to do. Can we do that? And, you know. Maybe it could be implied like, hey, they're married. Well, I'm sure they're married (laughs) with kids. I know how it works. That's enough for me. Are you more worried about that side of it or just like everybody not wearing clothes? Because that can also really steer a show in a very different direction. You know what? I... Here's what it it's going to be like everything else. I love Lord of the Rings. I'll be over here. I'm going to be 100 years old. Like, when I was your age, Lord of the Rings was about good versus evil. (laughs) Now it's the only way that we can save Middle Earth is naked. (laughs) Okay. Well, we'll see what happens. But this is because for Lord of the Rings, the Amazon series, they... Did a casting call, and the the call, you know, wanted actors who were comfortable with nudity. And the thing that bums me out is, if that's the discussion around this, I feel like we've we've really missed the mark. Meaning, like... Of what the show sh- yeah, would have like, been, yeah. You know, the things you love about Lord of the Rings, and they're like, who can we get naked? I'm like, all right, if this is the discussion we're having, we've, we missed it. Maybe you guys we'll, missed it. Let's have hope. Okay, and we'll see what what comes of all this. Nikki, hope remains while the fellowship is true. Yes, and we'll see what happens. The worst of the worst. Are you ready? The Riot Podcast. Radio U. 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 I promised you a headache story, but we'll get back to that later. Oh, you keep pushing it. You know what, Nikki? Uh, aren't you excited, though? You can't wait to see what it really oh, is. Oh, yeah, but will I be so excited that it's just going to be disappointing, or is it that good of a story? No, you'll probably bury your head in a pillow and... Just scream in frustration. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because you'll wish that it couldn't be true. Okay. So, that being said, Nikki, uh, it looks like... Now, remember, this is not in the U.S. We're going to be talking about something that's going on in the U.K. right now. So, just... just. Do you guys want to know what I think it is? I think the hard drive goes to sleep. And it, it winds and, up, and yeah. And I think when I click the button, it spins the hard drive back up. And it just needs a moment. It's so much cached. And then it's remixed <laughs> until it gets loaded. So what about the UK? Uh, Nikki, they're going to start coronavirus testing at airports. Oh, they are? They are. So you'll go in and... So the rapid test? Looks like it'll be a... Yes. Um, the ger- apparently in Germany right now, you have to have to take one before you're allowed to fly. Yeah, different areas. You're supposed to have a report, like you're supposed to have the uh, confirmation that it's clear. You have mm-hmm. to bring it with you to travel. Some places you have to go and quarantine. Some places you have to go and take a rapid test, and then you can go. Man. Just depends on where you're traveling. So in Germany, it's 72 hours before you travel. Mm-hmm. You have to have a negative COVID test. Before you go in? <laughs> this in the UK, it's going to start two weeks before Thanksgiving. Okay. Uh, and that's that's when that's all going to start up. You'll have to take, it'll be a spit test, a little swab. Before you, so you land and then when you're going through customs or before I, you even get on the plane to go there? Okay, that's actually a good question. Because it would be really upsetting if you flew the whole way and was in the plane. Like, it mm, should really start before you go. Let's see. I I don't know. Like, I, I do not have the details on exactly what they say. They're keeping the details of the testing plan tightly under wraps. Mm-hmm. But we can expect an update later in the week. Again, UK... Not U.S. Sure, and this will be right before Thanksgiving. That's right. Because I would hope that would start before you board the plane at its place it's taking off at. Man, let me That's tell you That's going to be a mess. I've got, well, it, it's <laughs> U.K., not the U.S. I have tickets to go to Oregon. Yeah. The third, what, <gasps> the week of Thanksgiving, basically. It's getting closer. You're fine, though, since that's not international travel. That I, I, They're not doing that. I had a phone call last night in which they were like, we just miss you. I want to see you. Blah, blah. And I actually, when I was hearing it, I was like, well, we're not going like that. <laughs> Why? There was just something about that. There was just this moment they of know. like, I feel like there, I don't, I don't know how to explain it, but something inside me has clicked. Might as well not even fell off the time, fell out the time off. Well, you have to realize where, where are you going? Like, you know, vacation is, is still possible and we see people still doing that. But for the long flight that you would have, is it possible? Like, will you be, I mean, your travel day is really long to get there. Well, the, I got a great first flight. 
But the second flight, they've done this whole thing where it went from a seven-hour flight. Now it's like 13. And it's not that long to get where he's going. You're just waiting. And so it's going to be so uncomfortable. And then when you get there, can you even do much? Well, You can see family, but... You can see family. Like, oh, yeah. Is it is it safe to see family? I don't know. I don't Can know. you go anywhere? Can I'm you do a, anything? I'm going to be bringing radio U germs with me. <laughs> Here, I'll give the uh, yeah, cleaner I need to stuff take that, that we cleaner, have. Like that alcohol. It's got 80 percent alcohol or whatever. Uh, well, yeah, I just don't know if it's what what will happen. Yeah. Well, there you have it. In the UK, they're starting to look at that. They they say the hope is that that will get um, more people flying again. Uh no, that actually does the opposite for me. Does it? Well, yeah. I mean, depending on how it's set up, that sounds like a mess. Oh, an absolute mess. Okay. And it's a mess to fly anyways. I don't want to add anything else to it. (laughs) If they're saying that I have to fly there, then go through customs and a part of customs to get in is to take a rapid test. I went through all that just to what if you get a false positive? What if you are positive and then you have to go turn around? Like, what are you going to do? You got a quarantine there? Are you stuck? I don't know. So I'm going to put you back on a plane if they show that you're positive. You got a lot of questions. And I'll tell you what, you don't sound very positive. Wow. Not only are you already awake, but you're listening to The Riot. Your day is off to a pretty rough start. The Riot on Radio U. So, Nikki, here's what we're finding. Yeah. That today is the last day. (laughs) It is. It's the last morning. If you are listening with us during the riot, then you have a chance to still grab one of the fall fundraiser t-shirts, the hoodies, or the Radio U coffee mug. Yes. As your thank you gift for donating to our fall fundraiser before that wraps up this morning. So what we're saying is that if you don't do it now, that's it. There you go. There's the chance. Dunsies. <laughs> and we still need a little bit of support left, so that's helping Radio You continue a few more days. Okay. Now, to this headache thing. Mm-hmm. Do you have a recurring headache? I always have headaches. Do you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, and what do they tell you yours are from? Uh, Well, a combination of everything. Okay. Have you considered it being a tapeworm egg? Uh, No, I've never heard that have idea. Have you never no! thought about it? No, I don't think that's it. Pass. Is, you know what, Nikki? Know, don't uh, know until you, you hear about it. You keep going to the doctor and they keep being like, yeah, we just can't quite figure it out. I, I have hope you ever, this isn't it. Have you ever asked? Have you ever said, doctor, have you considered that it could be a tapeworm that oh, laid eggs in, in my brain? Oh, it's in her brain. When you said that, I thought, oh, like in your stomach, like a tapeworm? But you mean it's in the brain. Yeah, these tapeworm eggs were up in her brain. Oh, that's she, awful. Now oh, she it's is, terrible. She is from Australia. It's true. Um, but in the American Journal of Tropical Medicine and Hygiene, uh, she never traveled overseas. Uh-huh. Uh, so this is the first native case that they found in Australia. Um, and so for the past seven years, she's been complaining about headaches that would happen two or three times a month, but they would go away with the migraine medication that she takes. Uh, her latest headache for more than a week came with severe visual symptoms. Uh, and her vision was blurring. So she went back to the doctor? So they did an MRI, and they're like, oh, it's probably a tumor. And they're like, yep, there it is. There's the tumor. So they opened up her head to, to take the tumor out, and they were like, Ugh. it's moving. I'll be on. <laughs> it's not a tumor. It's a tapeworm egg. They couldn't tell that? Oh, wait, so it's an egg or tapeworms in there? Um, Or both? I swallow. Okay, here. We- oh, do you-, you asked. So here we go. People who get the parasitic infection do so by swallowing eggs (laughs) found in the feces of a person who has an intestinal tapeworm. Oh, that means like not washing hands. We'll say that. It means a lot of things. It means a lot of things. (laughs) Yeah. um, But uh, most of the time you get a tapeworm, it lives in your intestines. Most tapeworms, uh, you know, you get rid of them. You don't even know that you have them. Oh, yeah. Like, that is gross. They say that it most commonly happens from undercooked pork, yeah. but uh, it can also be passed through food, water, uh, or soil that are contaminated with the eggs, and mm-hmm. we all know where they came from. So gross. All right. Um, yep. So she was a barista. She was considered to be at no or very low risk of infection, uh, but believes somehow accidentally got, you know, ingested something. So, Yep. And there you go. Right. Oh, man. So just shouldn't have said anything. The next time your head hurts, just be like, oh, 
I wonder. You always you always think the worst. You know, like, does anybody else do that? You're just like, oh, that's it. That's it. I don't know where this lies in the line of, like, is that as bad as if you think. <laughs> is this the worst? Yeah, you think, like, is it a tumor? Or is it, like, is this just as bad if you think this? It's hard to say, Nikki. I mean, if they were opening say. up her brain and stuff to do a surgery. Surgery. I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want any of it. I'm with you. I'm I know, with you I'll on take, that. I'll just quietly suffer the headache. It's fine. I don't I'm... need to ever know. <laughs> you thought they were bad live? Well, just wait until you hear this. The Worst of the Riot Podcast with Obadiah and Nikki. It's not a sure thing. All right, it's not. Um, but I'm thinking about getting an Oculus Quest 2. You guys are all in, aren't you? I feel like you are. What do you mean by you guys? I feel like you and Eric. About Eric? <laughs> I don't even know if yes. he... You have to explain it more to me. It's all based on this um, the Stormtroopers game that's out. Oh, you're a sweet kid. What is it? It's Squadrons. Squadrons. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Sounds Something a lot like with it. with your Stormtroopers and your little friends. So the Squadrons game that's out, <laughs> he keeps asking about it and he keeps hanging around. Like, I think he just wants to talk more about it. Talk with you about it? Yeah, so it doesn't seem see like... how nice it is? He wants, to, he wants to make sure you're on board. Well, I wish he would just, like, we could just talk it out and just get it out there like i don't think he wants to get the virtual reality side of it okay. but i think he wants to get the controller that's like the hotas yeah the hotas it's hard to get Hands and it's on expensive throttle and stick it's so expensive and i they are they're very expensive well, I they asked can be. him is there any other uh controller we can use for now and he's like well no and i'm trying to get is it no because nothing else is good enough <laughs> or what you know like when that <laughs> He just wants I, that. I will tell, he just wants the hotas. I will tell you that uh, one of the things I appreciate about Eric is that he wants to get the best experience possible. Right he, then and there. He will wait until he can have that experience. Right. He's very, and he is, he's good about waiting. Mm. That's where he and I, one of the places he and I differ. I'm just like, ah, just give me what you got. Well, I don't think he wants to wait anymore, though, because he's just keeps talking. I said, well, what does Obi use to play with it? Now, I can't disclose that information. And that's what he didn't want to say. He said, I don't know what he has. I said, does he have that? Or is he just using another remote control? Well, this discussion has taken a turn that I can't be a part of. <laughs> uh, because I, I can't. That feels like I'm wandering into a, a marriage financial discussion. I was just curious. But, um, yeah, I know you guys want it. I did play Squadrons over the weekend. Uh, it is uh, with fun. With what? Um, just decent. On my computer. On your computer with what? That's where he wants to play it too. With my hands. With your hands. So that, uh, that, that worked all say right. It. <laughs> but I, I spent a couple of times looking at because uh, the Oculus Quest Two comes out next week. It's and it's supposed to be amazing with this game. It is. It's three hundred dollars, and uh, which is the cheapest Oculus yet. It all it does PC and standalone kind of. It really seems cool. And I went to Best Buy and looked at. They didn't have the actual thing. Like, you couldn't demo it, but, you know, they had the device there that you could look at it physically. And, like, it looks pretty cool. So, if you bought the Oculus one to go with it, do you have to buy the controller the thing? The Hotas? Too? The Hotas? I would ask Eric that question. Because you don't want to. <laughs> about how that works. <laughs> okay. Because, you know, that we're into, like, a kind of an expert territory that I'm not even familiar with You just don't know? Right well, if anybody's been playing um, squad, Squadrons. 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 With your little friends there. With your little friends, your little buddies. <laughs> with your friends. <laughs> uh, there's two more of that. Or you've been playing, I guess. Did you I, like it? I, you know what? It is very good. Yeah. It but really it needs is. more? I didn't play the online version. So, like, I haven't done the multiplayer. I was just playing single player, and it is very well done. So I I enjoyed. So that it. didn't take care of it. Like you feel like you want to play though with an Oculus. Um, I told Eric something that I think is probably indicative of where we are, and that is, I said, you know, Eric, I think that piloting an X-wing is the high I've been chasing through video games my whole <laughs> life. So you really need it. So I was like, this might be. Oh gosh. I, I might grab this headset, put it on, and be like, well, that's it. I'm now done with video games because I finally you hit the, achieved you hit the, the thing I was looking yeah. for, and I am now ready to walk away. If not, wouldn't it be an investment during, you know, the uh, as we get through the fall and winter months when things go down a little bit and you have a little bit more free time and you want to stay in? 
I thought about it. But still feel like you're living in the world. Are you, do you <laughs> going live, out there? Are you in my brain right I now? Know, apparently. It's like, this is a smart time to buy into that. <laughs> and this would be good for you. you yeah, nothing else. <laughs> I'm I'm thinking about it. It launches next week, 300 bucks. I do, I do have that money set aside. I was going to get a PlayStation, but since they have basically no games. Yeah, you might as well wait. So you're I'm, going back in. I might. I might. You're listening to The Riot. Let's all work together today to live life with the patience of a Nikki dealing with an Obadiah. You gotta hang in there and get through it. You're listening to The Riot. Okay, let me ask you this. Do you think you go, okay, like I got a flight in November. Yeah. I buy this Oculus Quest, which doesn't have to be plugged into a computer. Sure. You can just wear oh, it. Oh, don't, don't say you want to play it in the plane. Well, what if I watched a movie on the plane? Um, What's your, I mean, like, well, let's you're supposed set, to wear... set the joking stuff aside. Yeah, can you actually Real use it? Real honest take. Would, some, would you sit on an airplane with this headset on and watch a movie? No, I probably would not. No? It no. does feel a little, like... It's a little too much right now because everybody's kind of on edge. And if you have to wear, some people, like, you have to wear a mask, but some people wear a face shield as well. Okay. So if you had a face shield on, you can't really have your Oculus on. I'm not wearing a face shield. Well, technically, the Oculus would, it be, would be my face shield. your face shield, so maybe that is safety. Could be perfect. So this is health ory. Wow, <laughs> this, is, this is healthy it's exactly for you what to you get needed. this. Yeah. yeah. No, I I don't know. I I think it'd be a bit weird. Oh. Well, it's do we more, have to use that word? Uh, it's not like you'd be weird. Like, hey, who's this weird guy with the Oculus? Like, you wouldn't even know what it was on his face. Yeah. Uh, but more like I would feel like I'd have to hold on to all my stuff. Well, I mean, I'm traveling with friends, so it's not like I would be. I agree with that. Like if I was, like if I was flying solo, heck no. Yeah. Like no way, no way, no way. Uh, But I'm not. So, and if you could be like near the window, so then no one else will see, then yeah, I guess you could. I'll just take it with me to the bathroom. I'll oh, be in the gosh, bathroom no, for two. Just, no, that just, acts worse. That's okay. worse than, worse. Worse than well, it. I was just thinking of something with a shutting door. You know how sometimes you have to read the room first? I think you just need to read the plane and then yeah, see how it is. Because I've been in so many planes where I walked in and thought, you know what? It's nice. Everybody's getting along. There's no tension in here. And maybe don't bring it out until after you've taken off. So someone, uh, Well, that's for someone sure. Someone doesn't get too scared or nervous. Okay, well, if anybody's flown in the last year... 8772 radio. You just tell me if you've seen anybody. I've never seen it. Like, I've never been on a plane with the virtual reality and headset. seen somebody bust out a headset. Or, because you know, it's not just VR. Like, back in the day, people had those, like, they had, like, ways to watch movies on a plane. Kind well, of you thing. still have screens sometimes in front of you. Yeah, I mean, it but does, now you just use your phone. You see how spoiled we are now. It's like, well, I was going to, what are you taking with you when you travel? Take my 3DS, my <laughs> iPad, my iPhone, my uh, noise canceling headphones, my Oculus. My it, it gets to be a bit much. Yeah, but most most airlines just let you just log in on your phone uh, to watch all the stuff. So I I don't know what what it, be, it would be if it'd be weird. Okay, I think it. I think we already have the answer. What? <laughs> no, we don't. It's fine. Everything you love about the Riot, plus a handy-dandy fast-forward option. This is the Worst of the Riot podcast. Nikki, let's talk about butter. Yeah. Well, I mean, is it butter or is it spread? It's a butter spread. Yeah. It's, so, uh, like, there's, there's probably some butter-like qualities to it. Is it the real stuff or is it an alternative? There's butter in it. Okay. For sure. It's Lando Lakes. Yeah. Cinnamon sugar butter spread. Well, well. Did you know that existed? I think I've seen it just in other spreads too, but cinnamon sugar is a good way to go. Imagine on like a nice warm toasted bagel. You know what they're saying? Some cinnamon raisin bread. They are saying that this Land O'Lakes cinnamon sugar butter spread. Which means it's not all butter. They say that it is basically the second coming of the Texas Roadhouse oh, butter spread. Oh, their butter. <gasps> Oh, I forgot that this, well, I mean, what helps though, Texas Roadhouse has these really amazing rolls. So I think that's a combo there. I agree with you. But but if you could find something. I feel like with a little bit of effort, you could get darn close to recreating. What about, think about this, Nikki, what about getting yourself like a King's Hawaiian roll bag? I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed. I know. You know, they're like, well, yeah, just have one. Just can't. So. Just one package. Yeah, just one. And then I always see it at Costco, and that's not like the one package. That's the 
the one very large one. It's true. So I cannot handle it. Okay. Well, I was going to say, like, you take those, you put them in the oven. Oh, some pull butter them out, on it. Then you got some cin- Lando Lake cinnamon sugar butter spread. Or you mm. could take, um, what would be really good, like a tortilla. Have you ever done that? And you rolled it up and sprinkled cinnamon sugar on it. I have. So you can put the butter on it and add more cinnamon and sugar. Seems seems reasonable. I think what we're saying is it will be good on anything. Apparently, Lando Lakes also has a honey butter spread. Yeah. Which I didn't know, but like... <laughs> I mean, why else do I go to O'Charlie's? Oh, is Honey that what butter. theirs? Yes, oh. yes. Don't they? Isn't that right? I don't Honey. know. Well, I know for sure that that's what you can get at. Uh... Oh, it's been. <laughs> wait, wait. What is it? Uh, Golden Corral. Oh. I had this image of me standing out in front of it with a balloon, which happened. Yeah, you're and on your I, birthday. I couldn't read the sign anymore. It's been too long, Nikki. Well, those look good. I mean, I never, I don't honestly go to the butter area too often. And I know, I, which is why we should start. And if I do, it's usually at Costco and you get like the eight bricks of it. So yeah. they don't really give you the flavor options. I do buy that salted Irish butter yeah, or whatever. From Co- yep, I buy that. Uh, but this though. So it is a cinnamon sugar one, right? Cinnamon sugar butter spread. (gasps) Does that sound good? You know, tonight, just get a bunch of bread and hang out. (laughs) Here's all my friends. (laughs) Here's all my bread friends. Um, I can eat them. (laughs) It's fine. The riot is well-versed on many different topics. They're shy at first, but they're quite skilled at conversation. This is The Riot on Radio U. According to this report, President Trump says he's getting bored in the hospital. Bored in the hospital? Yeah, he's just. I think they were saying he might there. be released today. Yeah, it depends on who you listen to. Yeah, everybody's got a different different take on it. This may <laughs> surprise you, but when it comes to anything involving the president, there are conflicting reports from either side. Sure. So it's hard to know which is which. Well, and- I was proud though. At least coming through the weekend, I think uh, a lot of people settled on whether you like him or not. There's still a, a respect you should still have for a human being, and you wouldn't wish this on anyone. So I think I did see a lot of people with uh, more nicer comments, even if they were not a fan of him, as the weekend ended. That's not what I saw. <laughs> oh, really? I saw a lot of people that are like, if he desires, he deserves it. Well, it was quite interesting. A lot of people are like, how can this man full of hate, et cetera, et cetera. And then they turn around and just say, and I wish he dies. And you're like, wait a minute. That's the same thing. Yes. But yes. I don't think everybody noticed that. Uh, or they didn't notice. care. But... I think it was a matter of not caring. I think it was a, a chance yeah. to take a shot. You know, coronavirus must be the hotness again, because I got to tell you, like, I got, I've got several friends in my life right now that are quarantining. Now, they don't know if, if they, they have, have it, it or not. Sure. They came in. Con- Here's the part where it gets like, oh, my gosh. They came in contact with someone who thinks they have it. So they have to quarantine while they wait for that person to get their Mm -hmm. response back. So in one case, it was a friend of mine whose roommate thinks they have it. Not roommate, but like apartment mate. So like there are like five of them that live in an apartment. So they're all quarantining until the, uh, the results, the tests come back from them. Maybe, maybe not having it. Sure. Uh, And that's an example of three different people in my life right now that are Lockdown. Dealing with that, yeah. sure. So it's the hotness now. Um, I think I'm probably going to have to lock down soon because I came in contact with someone who Actually, thinks well, they let's, thinks. Let's all look at our calendars. Uh, when does Thanksgiving start? And if we can like back, it up, back it up a few weeks before then, we'll, we'll do that. Well, if I could get it to touch up against my vacation. <laughs> I don't want to do that. I don't. I, I, I want to do a vacation to where you have the time off. I don't want it to be where you have to. Does that I make th- sense? And, yes. and then you have the fear of it and the scare, you know, scared of it. I don't I don't want that. It makes perfect sense. Nobody the last thing that you want is one someone telling you what to do. That that's what vacation's supposed to be. Finally no one's telling you what to do. Now they're like stay home and you're like I've never wanted to leave more. And it's not like, well, stay home. It's a, no, you're actually supposed to really stay home. Like, well, I will, but like, I, I need a two liter. Nope, nope, none of that. But I need a, a little, some num nums. So no one, no one wants it. And no. I, I would hope no one would want it for anybody. Uh, but uh, <laughs> again, uh, not everybody was sharing those same feelings. <laughs> little, we can be better than that, guys. There's ugliness in the world, guys. That's true. I know that is shocking. Hard to believe. But it's out there. It was bad enough the first time around, but now it's worse. 
Don't believe us? Just keep listening. You'll find out soon enough. This is the worst of the Riot Podcast. So, Nikki, the new James Bond movie that we were talking about on Friday. Uh huh. And I was like, yeah, it hasn't been delayed. It's coming out November, whatever. You were like, no, I think it has. And I said, no, I don't think it has. It's, I, was, I was ahead of it. You, Nikki, I knew. Were, you were ahead of the game. It's been pushed now to 21. Yeah. So it wasn't delayed on Friday. Mm hmm. But then but now again, it is delayed. It is delayed. So not too surprised. Um, but Bond, there's no way Bond would open up. None of the big movies. I don't think, honestly, at this point, you'll see a big movie, an actual full release this year. Yeah. Now, they, okay, I'll have to say, uh, everybody's pointing at Tenet because mm-hmm. Tenet released back in August and it has done well internationally, but not, it's done okay in the United States. Nowhere near the money it would have made. In a quote unquote, you ready? Normal. Normal market. Time. But right. they did not want to push it on demand. And so because it did well internationally, that's made it okay. Right. For them. But everybody else is basically saying they're not nah, doing that. Yeah, they're not doing nah. that for Bond. They're going to move the Wonder Woman. Like they're not moving. They're not going to keep any of those here. See, I, okay. What do you think? Because, like, I think if you would put out a movie, let's say James Bond mm-hmm. or Wonder Woman or even Black, Black Widow, Widow, I think if they would have released that movie and not Tenet, and I understand they're different businesses, different companies, different whatever, but public reaction to one of those films, I think, would have been stronger than Possibly. to Tenet. But, I mean, movie theaters are at such a low capacity and there's such less showings. It it's just true. can't possibly make that much money. Well, so, I'm not sure. They're moving Bond to April of 21. And then they are also saying that a lot of movie theaters are starting to talk about closing down again. Regals are closing all of them in the United States and the UK uh, because there are no other big releases. There's Why would they out. stay open? Like, how many times can they show you Goonies again? That's all they got. Because you're only going one time. So it's sad because of so many people, you know, hey, that's a being whole out industry. and then being yeah. back open for a bit and now being closed again. It's just sad. It's a whole thing. So I... I say this without any, like, no joke. I hope there are some theaters left next year when they want to release those movies. Yeah. That's tough. We would just think of it as like, oh, they're just pushing the movie. But, yeah, I didn't think we've run out of movies now for the theaters that are open. Totally have. In case you're wondering, yes, we do get complaints. They have gone too far this time. They are going to be held accountable. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Now, Nikki, I don't think we're there yet, but it's out there and it's waiting on us. And at some point, we're probably just going to have to do it. We're going to have to have a non-ironic photo taken of us in (laughs) denim and sunglasses. Why in denim and sunglasses? Which, if you don't realize, for a lot of radio station duos, uh, mostly I feel like in the country, more adult format of radio they tend to wear like uh matching denim outfits and get their pictures taken for like their show photos yeah and i like our time is coming so we might as well we always wanted to do one in a ironic way can't be (laughs) ironic see if anybody got it we we have to do it because it's really cool we do yeah is denim back in or what are we doing i don't know i just got an email for some radio thing and i scrolled down and there was the guy wearing a denim shirt with sunglasses on and i was like you know can't I actually can't tell if he's trying to make a joke or if he's, he's probably not. I feel like he that photo is a serious photo. Is it a station sunglasses too? Like can we get, you know, promotion in that way? Or? No, I don't see that, but I'm sure that management would like that. What if we had denim shirts that had the logo? <laughs> I uh, don't know if those will sell. What do you call it? <laughs> Embroidered. Embroidered, yeah. <laughs> That. That's what we need. Maybe. Maybe. So. What, like, why don't we just start? We could always just in the photo add Radio U to the shirt. You With know, the, oh, in post. Yeah, we could just make it look like it was. We could. Because my thought is, like, just wait wait for it. What if we popped the collar? Oh, on the it, shirt? To give it kind of a little edgy. I don't know. You know. I don't really wear any button-up shirts, so. Well, it's just I for don't, this I one. don't think the look will go it's well. It's just for this one. One photo. Yeah, and then after that, you can go back to. The normal day wear. You know, whatever it is, but. Okay. Um, I, just, I just saw that email, and I was like, you know. Maybe. It's coming. It's out there. <laughs> Somewhere out there waiting on Nikki and I is the uh, non-ironic no. denim photo. The, for our photos, the more we try with something, like set up something, make it have a reason and a, a look to it, yeah. I feel like it doesn't work out as well as just when we just here, take a photo real quick. That tends to work better. There's one exception. 
Nikki and I had Eric take our picture with some candy cigarettes. Do you remember that one upstairs? <laughs> Years ago. <laughs> Such a good picture. We look so angry. Well, I mean, I think we're just tired. Our angry, our tired look looks angry. It was a good look. It was? It was. <laughs> it was quite a long time ago. It was. I don't know if I still have that picture, but I'd have to look. I don't either. But Nikki, do you like do you want me to get the glamour shots booking or what? Um, let's not schedule anything yet. You know, I'm not quite ready for like holiday photos. Do okay. we need something like that to go in our Christmas cards? Well, I think you should consider maybe today, like if you want to do some shopping or whatever. Look for denim. <laughs> We're listening to the worst of the riot. Radio U. Let's talk about what you're spending your money on when it comes to your phone. And you're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Buying a phone. No, 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 no. I'm talking about when you get your phone. What are you using your phone to spend money on? What apps oh, sure. are you paying for? So in just app stores, which would be a look at Google Play, the Apple App Store. I don't know which other ones got included. I know those two for sure. Uh, They say in the third quarter of 2020, so that would be July, August, September. Yeah. That we spent $29.3 billion. Oh, on apps? In those app stores. But that would count if you were doing in-game purchases, right? I think so. And would that technically count music too, or is it just in-game? I don't know the answer to that. So I don't, oh man, would music count for that? Like music and movies, would they I count? I know for sure games would, because that does count in right. the app store purchases. Um, but outside of that, I don't. I don't think so. I think that it, I don't think it is. So not is... games, not music, or I'm sorry, games, yes, but not music, not movies, not things like that. I don't think so. That's so, a lot of money for in-app stuff. It is a lot. And here's the other thing that's crazy, is that as an Apple user, they say that the Apple App Store made twice as much money as the Google Play Store. Sure. Twice, twice as, as much. much. I'm not surprised. I am a little surprised, mostly because the Google Play Store is on every other kind of phone. Oh, yeah, that's true. I mean, just just by the sheer fact that it's everywhere, I would think they would have at least a larger customer base. Mm-hmm. But then again, if you bought an Apple phone, this goes one of two ways. You're either so poor because of the phone, you can't afford to buy anything, <laughs> or or you are so dang rich in order to buy the phone, you're just spending money like crazy. No, it's probably a, a little combination in between where you value spending your money towards in-app purchases more than, um, you know, you uh, go do anything don't, else. Don't try to make it seem like, like it's the okay. in-app purchases were the smart purchases. And those are during months where there wasn't a lot of other stuff to do. So well, you would certainly. do, like, you would buy more stuff for your games. Certainly, that is true. So I can I'm see it being okay. totally fine why it, why it went up. Have I bought any apps? Because I, I, I got an Apple, an iPhone. Yeah. What is, what? <laughs> What the heck? Why can't I talk? I got. I know what you're saying. I got an iPhone. Was that like February or March? Uh, it was springtime, so yeah. I think March. So somewhere in there. So let's see. Have I bought any apps since then? I I did buy uh, Castlevania Symphony of the Night. It was ninety nine cents. Mm-hmm. I picked that up. That was a game that I bought. Um, I think that's it. I think what we don't realize is 99 cents even adds up as you have so many oh, users. Most assuredly. That it's not inconceivable for them to get up to those billions of dollars. Well, and then you've got people like, man, ask around. Ask your friends what they're putting money into. They'll You'll find out they're ashamed of it, but they're probably buying into something. I don't think it's all just us, too. I think if you ask your parents and uh, you said it the other day, your aunts. Yeah. <laughs> And like your grandparents and stuff, I think they spend more money than they realize or we realize on game stuff. Hey, those in-app purchases roll up after a while. I, Eric and I were talking about some Marvel game that he plays on his phone, and he hasn't made big purchases, but we were talking about what it would cost if yeah, he would. Just it's to ins- progress in the game. It's insane. Like $30, 40 $50. What? So there, and remember, what is it called? What are you if you spend a lot on in-app stuff? You're a whale. That's a that's an actual term. It's called. So in case you want like motivation to not spend money, it's like I don't want to be a whale. Don't be a whale. <laughs> so you're not supposed to buy as much for your in-game purchases. <laughs> Bottom line, we're spending a lot of money. We are on it, them phones. It just keeps going up. The riot radio you. 
you know, speaking of dumping money into stuff, I, I'd say that probably all of us, if we came to like your place and we looked, you probably have something that you spend money on that you like that other people would be like, that is stupid. Sure, we all have different things. Like, which, you know what? I At the end of the day, it is stupid because let's face it, we're all going to die and that stuff's probably going in the trash. <laughs> But <laughs> but what's not stupid, I think, is the enjoyment that you get out of it. Yeah. So it's not the item itself that necessarily contains a lot of value, though if you're an art collector, it may be. Um, but it's the enjoyment that you get out of it in the moment that makes the item worthwhile. And we're all different with that. So we have to be very careful when we go, you know, throwing stones at everybody else's enjoyment yeah. things, because sometimes one thing makes somebody legitimately happier and, and maybe not you. Unless you collect stamps. That's stupid. You don't see any any need for that? That's just dumb. <laughs> no, I say this because this is so great. You guys know what an HOA is? It's a homeowners association. If you own a house, sometimes it's a condo association. A lot of times if you live somewhere, you have to pay this extra fee to live there. And it's to make sure that... A lot of things. It's, so if you're in an area where there's a, a large uh, group of homes or condos, it's to keep order within having a bunch of people right. who might choose to do one thing or another that's not technically for the betterment of the neighborhood. <laughs> I live right next door to the HOA president. In oh, my you do? It's so funny. Every once in a while I'll see him walking off like, hey, where are you going? He's like, uh, somebody's got their boat parked down here. They I got to go out and tell them they're not supposed to have their boat there. I'm just like, I love it, dude. I can only love imagine it. what they go through. So, okay. All that being said, an HOA president, you have to pay your money every month or whatever. He's a stamp collector. And he went ahead and took certain liberties with the $21,000 that were in this HOA's bank account. Oh, he took the money for his own stuff? And he stole the money to buy himself a lawnmower and collectible stamps. stamps. He took the account from $21,000 to $180. <gasps> and he refused to show people receipts for what it had gone towards. I never understand when we read these stories. Like, you don't think you'll get caught? Someone will obviously see what you're doing. He also bought, I'm sorry, he also bought a chainsaw. Oh, so, so. does that mean how much did he spend on stamps then? Uh, they a say mower and a chainsaw can't be that much out of it. It's about 2000 on stamps. 2000 on stamps. Stamps. Ah, oh, it's a thing, I guess. Uh, you know, like I said, it's uh, it's up to you. What enjoyment are you getting out of money you're embezzling? It seems really <laughs> ridiculous to us. But, but you know what? It's that enjoyment that you're getting. It's what not if the embezzling. Is the enjo- what if that's the enjoyment? That's the rush? Yeah, that's the rush in the eye for the guy. Uh, it's a whole industry on it. See, to me, the action is the juice. Well. I don't know. Mm. I made So, I, you know, Nikki, again, what did we say at the beginning? Anything fine? That we're not going to judge. We're not going to judge what you're not doing. Come down, right. Mm. That's what we said. Well, until you're breaking laws then we don't have to judge it the someone law else does will judge yeah, it. Yeah, yeah that's already set up the law will judge you which is ironic because he's there to protect the neighborhood set up <laughs> not the laws though those are just rules those are just By rules. laws sure. i think they call them that's exactly it yeah worst, worst of, of the, the riot. riot radio you nikki yes Let's see a show of hands of how many people in here have seen the first season of Cobra Kai through to its entirety. I've seen the first season of Cobra Kai. All right, Nikki, I see that hand. Uh, yeah, I did. When it was on YouTube, and then it moved to Netflix. It has. And I think that was a really good move for them. Huge resurgence for them. It has been. Like, big time. So, I know so many people that I have talked to in so many different age brackets. I know, it's weird. But I think for Netflix, uh, let's see, there's one and two. Then three was released, right? But three was still made by YouTube, maybe, and Netflix still bought it. So I think, I don't know for sure, but... Season three isn't out yet. It's, but I think it's been done. I think you're right. Yeah. I think they've already shot season three. But I don't think that season three was shot with Netflix totally in mind. In mind. Yeah. So I'm curious to see when one actually comes out, which would be four... If that was the actual, here's Netflix money, does that change any of it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. So it the show started on YouTube. A uh, couple of years ago? Yeah, I'm double checking here about the whole thing. Uh, 
I don't know. Like, I don't know if it's one of those things where they, they just announced the date of season three is January 8th, 2021. January what, I'm not, 8th? what I'm not sure about is I think Netflix might have, I think that deal might have happened and season three might have known. So maybe that it is was the going one? to Netflix. I think so. Because they announced the date for season three and which is January 8th of next year. And then they announced that they have picked it up for season four. Mm-hmm. Who would have ever thought <laughs> that it would actually do well? That, that would have been something that happened. So Cobra Kai has been picked up for a fourth season, which will be the Netflix one. But the January one is the third season. I think it's hard to watch. What do you mean? But that was YouTube style. If you watch it that way, I, that's why I really want to see the one that really gets Netflix more involved in it. It to me, YouTube it just... had a style when they started their own. Uh, you know, it was almost like oh, I don't want to say it that way. Please, no, it's almost like a student project, kind sure. of okay. like you would have All a right. bunch of individuals who were involved in in YouTube who. We're really good at it, but maybe not technically as advanced sure. as people who would be involved in a Netflix or an Amazon or a Hulu project. So it had a slightly different feel to it that was a little bit less put together. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but I, I have had a, I have tried to go back. To watch it? And watch it. And <laughs> well, I, now you're getting another season and then the fourth season. I have had a hard time watching it. I've tr- Man, I keep trying and I'm just like, eh. Uh, so they're like, saying that uh, back in, it looks like in August when the Cobra Kai stuff had come out, uh, it outranked The Office and The Umbrella Ad- Academy. So it, it did super well. Yeah, no, it has, it's been kind of a big deal for them, which, hey. That's why there's another one. Good for them. The Riot. Just because it's bad doesn't mean it's not good. Wait, isn't that exactly what it means? It's The Riot on Radio U. Nikki, the Atlanta Falcons, Uh they want to come back. They do? Well, they want to bring back their fans. Up until now... Are they playing with no one in the the stadiums? That is correct. So they want to bring them back, and they've got a plan. They're going to allow people back in. Mm -hmm. It'll be the first time since last year that they've done that. And they are going to disinfect the stadium after every event with drones. With drones? Oh, they're going to sort of spray everything? They said they have these drones that spray this disinfectant, and they're able to spray that disinfectant all over the surfaces. That works, I guess. And that's the job. They say it is 95% faster mm-hmm. than having people go through and wipe down the seats. And it's probably safer for not having the people to do that. I, I guess. But, I mean, you want to talk about some job elimination. Unless, of course, these drones, someone... Someone has to operate the drones? Yeah, or the people, instead of doing the seats, can do something else. Yeah, so it's it's kind of cool. So when are they going to let crowds back in? Uh, they say they're going to allow people at games next week. Next week? Yeah. At so, what capacity? Which, or... which is to say this week, like mm-hmm. this upcoming series of games. Um, at what capacity? I don't know. Like, my guess would be un- undoubtedly limited. Uh, it's, okay. I'm spitballing here, but I was looking at another sporting event where they were at 30%. 30%? Mm-hmm. Now, I don't know what it will be at this NFL game. I've but. seen a few people who have gone to games, and, and you know, it's it's tragic reasons why, but, I mean, they enjoy it so much more. They're having be, the best experience of their life. Because they're only the only one in the row, and then the other rows are clear, and then the rows, like, they're alternating stuff so much to where you, you're finally going, and you're finally having a space to enjoy the game. Well, I'll tell you what. I The last time I went to see an Ohio State game, the experience was so miserable in the state stadium because there i mean you couldn't sit there's I not guess, enough space for everybody and you don't know what happens but everybody loses their spot on oh, the thing you stand up and down up yeah. and down up and down pretty soon you find yourself standing out in the row wondering how that ended up happening why can't we all fit on there yeah <laughs> so mm. but i know these stadiums are built for so many more like they need that many people in it's kind of like with disney disney can operate at letting less people in but it's it's made and needs to be at its full capacity. They want to make the money. Pretty much. So that's yeah. the Atlanta Falcons. They'll start welcoming people back in. With drones. With drone cleaning. It's wild, dude. You might be thinking that this won't be quite as bad the second time around. Well, you'd be greatly mistaken. We're listening to the worst of the Riot Podcast.
When I was in junior high, my uh, gym teacher had like a 1963 Corvette. Mm-hmm. Or something. It's like an old Corvette. And she loved it. And she wouldn't drive it that much. But every once in a while, if the weather was really nice, she would. And you could see her Corvette. It was a convertible. Super cool. Um, of course, car like that. I don't know if it's valuable other than the enjoyment, probably. Well, to her it was. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, you know, you'd have to spend some money to get a car like that. Or you could just go to China. Did you see this? What is it? China has created is essentially a, a knockoff 1960-something Corvette. That's what they do. And they're building a brand new one. <laughs> we always uh, we reference a lot. If you ever watch this uh, show called Top Gear, they did an episode where they went to China to show off um, some cars there. China and its rules mean that they can essentially create anything they want and sell it as their own design. They can literally copy any car and absolutely sell it there. Whereas here, if another car company came out and said, oh, we're making this and, you know, Corvette could go after them, their Corvette cannot go after them. They cannot stop them. They cannot, you know, do a lawsuit. It's it's really, really weird. So here's, they can just copy it. Here's what they say, that this is called the SS Dolphin mm-hmm. uh, from Song Sane Motors. And a rep from GM says... They're not using any of our trademark names or logos. The design is not identical to the C1 Corvette. Which means they know there's nothing they can do about it. So they're not going to do anything about it. They're not going to do anything about it. But it is is just what it is. What would it be like to get... It even has the steering wheel on the, you know, quote-unquote correct side on yeah. the left side like you would have in the united states so what's the point what no 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 what what would it cost to get yourself one of those to bring it here or yeah. if you were in china yeah why not i think you'd have to put on a boat and send it here mm. so I, right but you know would that be like cool to have, to have? it uh not i mean I don't like the look of it. It's so. power. You don't. I don't well, I like mean, the look well, of it at all. I, I, okay, but like in different colors. I I don't think the the splash page color there. Like it's the, like a teal uh, dolphin blue. <laughs> but you can get it in black. You can get it in red. Eh, I'm not a classic car person, but if you were, then maybe it would be cool. It's powered by a 1.5 turbo gasoline engine and an electric motor. Mm-hmm. It gives it a range of 62 miles without having to rely on fuel. Uh, but if you put fuel in it, you can get... Uh, actually, I don't have a read on that. But. So if you were a car enthusiast or a purist, would you even want something like this, knowing that it's basically just a knockoff version of it? I don't know. That, I if you could think, never get the original, I would this think be it's good? interesting to see, like, knockoff stuff like this. It's always interesting to get a look at it. When you're like, I got the Air Jordans, but they're the Air... Jordans close with an enough. E. Like they're really close. And I always think it's really interesting to get a look at sure. items like that. So I don't know. The um, car though, I mean the price is so much more. The other thing too about a classic car, I can't say what draws someone to a classic car per se, uh, but isn't it just the look and feel? Like does it matter that it's actually 70 years old? Maybe. We're, we're not car people. I don't know. For some it would be because, you know, right. you're restoring it and you want the uh you want it all to go with that that age that it came out. Yeah. I I don't know enough. I've lived my entire life with the hey it starts. <laughs> The worst of the riot is over, but the fun can keep going. Hey, I saw you checking out my goods. Check the riot blog or stalk us on social media. You want to sample them? A little try before you buy, huh? Through riot.radiou.com. What does it mean to be a duck? Search your heart.